is Natalie Watson, and I'm the producer of For Pet's Sake, the Animal Rescue League of New Hampshire's television show. Mika, whom I adopted from the Animal Rescue League, and I are proud to announce a new season of For Pet's Sake, filled with new faces, more tips and tricks, and of course, lots of adoptable animals looking for their forever homes. So please sit back and enjoy our show. This is Jughead, and Jughead is a active four-year-old boy who has some interesting uh, handicap. He is deaf, and so uh, he uh, maybe uh, eventually you can teach him how to uh, do a little cat sign language, but he. Uh, you wouldn't know he's deaf unless you try to call him and uh, uh, in some way use your voice and he's not looking at you. Uh, so you treat him just like someone who, have, who has a, a hearing problem. Well, certainly um, I would approach him uh, right right to his head, not coming from behind him, because he can't, you know, he can't hear your footsteps. But if you uh, approach his head, and uh, he'll get very used to, you know, the other thing is that uh, he may eventually get used to footprint, depending on what your floors are like, but he might be able to sense vibrations in the floors and uh, that will uh, help her, him to know that somebody's approaching. But you have to keep in mind, certainly at the beginning, that you're going to approach him so that he can see you. He is really very uh, uh, wonderful cat. He is very engaged in everything he plays. Uh, he certainly likes uh, the laser beam. That, that is... Uh, that is very exciting for him, and he gets wonderful exercise at the same time. Well, that is Jughead. Join us on September 9th for the Animal Rescue League of New Hampshire's Dog Friendly 5K and Pet Fair. The whole event takes place at the beautiful Dairyfield Park in Manchester, and it's a great activity for the whole family, even the dog. We have vendors, food trucks, dog demonstrations, and more starting at 9 a.m. and lasting till 1 p.m. You can register for the 5K the day of the event or at www.mydogsarebarking5k.org and don't forget to bring the dog along. We hope to see you there. So she's Bryn and her bigger sister is named Lolly. Um, they're really sweet girls. Uh, they appear to be what we call silver fox mixes. Um, you can tell by the silver coloration uh, on Bryn's coat in especially. Uh, they're obviously big girls, but I think that just means there's more of them to love. The bigger the rabbit is, they tend to be a little bit more friendly um, for whatever reason. They, oh, look at them. So they were adopted for a while from us and they lived a happy, happy life with their family. Unfortunately, they did have to be returned because their family was moving to a, a new apartment where they weren't allowed to have rabbits. Um, but the family reported that these two were social, uh, interactive, they liked the kids in the home. They liked to just sort of run around the kitchen sliding and chasing each other and playing with their toys. So these guys are really great animals for a family. Um, Probably not super young kids, but anyone, any kid who's you know in grade school could be a, a really wonderful rabbit sibling. Um, rabbits are, are really special because even though they don't like to be picked up and held very much, they are really interactive and affectionate creatures. It's just they display it in different ways than we might be used to. Yeah. If a rabbit really loves you, they'll groom you. 
I have yet to encounter that with any of the rabbits here at the shelter, but I have heard from um, people who've adopted our rabbits that that happens and it just sounds adorable. And you can, yeah, and you can see Lolly over there. She's playing around with the blankets, which is actually something that rabbits do quite often. So she's digging and she's picking it up and she's moving it around. Um, and that sort of harkens back to rabbits' instinctive digging behaviors. Um, so they'll do that a lot because indoor rabbits don't really have access to dirt very often. So they'll play around and dig on, um, you know, on little blankets, on sweaters. Sometimes they'll dig when they're sitting next to their person on the couch. Um, and it's just, it's just a sort of a way for them to interact with their environment and have a little fun while they're doing it. <laughs> She's like, I need the food. They're very food motivated creatures. They especially like their pellets. So a rabbit's diet, um, unlike what you've seen in cartoons, it's not primarily consisting of carrots. Uh, rabbits should have um, enough Timothy hay to essentially be the size of their body every day. So they, get, they eat a lot of Timothy hay. Um, and then they get some pellets. They get each about a quarter cup a day and they get some vegetables, quite a bit of vegetables. Um, and then the carrots and fruits, which are high in sugar, those are treated more like snacks and candy um, than like a really essential, you know, main part of their diet. Because it, just like candy for humans, it's not great in large amounts, um, but they sure do love it when they get it. <laughs> so that's an easy way. If you have a rabbit that's a little shy, giving them, um, little bits of banana or some bits of uh, some other fruits can be a really great way to make friends with them uh, because they do love it. So it's like a high value treat for them. Girls, you pushed it into your house. What are you gonna do? And it's funny, because you'd think these are pretty big girls. You'd think they wouldn't be able to fit in that house. But I turn around every few hours and I see one of them just popping out of that house. They, they find a way. Rabbits are tenacious. And what's funny to me is that even though Bryn can't walk super well, she's still incredibly litter box trained. So rabbits can be litter box trained just like cats can. Um, we have, you see, you can see Bryn over there sitting in her litter box. Um, so what we have is um, just some litter boxes that are full of an absorbent layer and then some hay on top. Uh, the rabbits, their, their body is such that when they're eating something, something's coming out the other end. <laughs> it's just a continuous loop. So um, they like to eat, they like to munch in their box. So they have that hay for that. Um, and these girls are actually really well litter box trained. So they could be, uh, in the future, they could be what we call free range rabbits, uh, which are rabbits who aren't confined in a cage 24 seven or when their family is not home. Um, we actually have a staff member who has a free range rabbit who roams the house all day. Uh, and she's perfectly litter box trained, gets along great with the other cat or with the cat in the home. And, so rabbits can really, they don't have to be in a cage. They're not just cage creatures. They love spending time with their humans and they love exploring. Uh, and if they're litter box trained, then they don't leave a mess when they do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So this is Mama. She is a sweet senior girly who is looking for a home. Uh, she's been looking for quite a while now, uh, which is really sad. Obviously the shelter is no place for a senior dog, especially. Hi, what are you doing? She would like to be an only pet uh, because she's not too, too fond of those whippersnappers, those other dogs who might jump all over her. 
and she has a bit too keen an interest in cats for us to feel comfortable putting them together. Uh, one of her favorite things to do is chew on her squeaky toys and, and chew on them until they don't squeak anymore. Uh, she's a little destructive of her toys, but nothing else. Um, she has some lovely beds in her kennel that she never even touches. She just snoozes on them, so she understands what a bed is for. She loves getting belly rubs from her friends. Hi. Which is pretty much everyone here at the shelter. I think I speak for all of us when I say she is one of our favorite dogs here. Um, she's just such a sweet soul um, and she doesn't ask for much. She just asks for love uh, and she gives plenty of love in return. She loves to give kisses. Uh, we've actually had a few sleepovers here at the shelter um, back in the winter months when there was some bad snow. We would have some staff members stay here overnight and we would always take Mama into our big multi-purpose room and she would spend the night with us and she just loved snuggling up you know, giving us kisses throughout the night and just having a fun sleepover with her friends. Uh, so we think that's what she's looking for. She just wants someone to snuggle with every night, um, which, you know, I think we're all looking for that. <laughs> she is a sweet, sweet girl. Um, she likes most people, you know, she's a happy, wiggly girl when she meets people. Uh, she's definitely looking for a quiet home. We like to think of her as looking for a retirement home with a comfy couch. Uh, she does have arthritis in her back legs, so she is on some arthritis pain medication, which is working amazingly well for her, uh, but that's definitely something that a family would need to keep in mind before they adopt her, that she will have ongoing medical needs. Uh, but with those, with those arthritis medications, she is turning back into the silly, fun girl that we knew when we first met her. Mama, go get it. She is incredibly food motivated, so that's one way to get her to do whatever you want. Just give her some food and she'll do it. Now she is an older lady, so she doesn't have all the energy of those young pups, but she's just, I think she's the perfect speed for maybe an older couple or like a, a young professional who doesn't have a lot of time to deal with puppy antics. Um, she, all she needs is a few walks around the block a day and she's perfectly happy and to spend the rest of her time cuddling up watching Netflix with you. And chewing on a toy, of course. Mama was originally a transport from, um, I think South Carolina, definitely from somewhere in the South. Uh, and she has obviously had a lot of puppies. She is a mama after all, uh, but no more puppies for mama. She was spayed quite a while ago. Uh, so that part of her life is over, uh, but it's clear to see that she hasn't always had the best life. She was probably, she probably had a lot of litters. Um, so I'm sure she wasn't too happy about that many kids, but she's glad to know that she is done with that now. So even though Mama loves to chew on her toys and play with them and sometimes rip them apart, she never does that to any of the bedding in her kennel. So we've given her um, some really nice fancy dog beds that she has never tried to rip apart. So we suspect that in a home, I think she'll understand the difference between a toy and a cushion, which is nice. You know, if you have a fancy couch, I don't think she'd try to eat it. We have Mojo and Sarabi. They are two sisters that are eight years old. 
Um, they came from another shelter that we work with up north. They usually reach out to us when they um, have a high capacity of animals and are looking for some homes to um, help out for these kitties. Um, they just don't have as many as adoptions as we do. Um, so we helped them out. Um, they went to their shelter because they actually were found as strays. Somebody left these two girls behind, um, which is so sad because they're so sweet. Um, they are super affectionate. They love people. Usually when you first come in to visit with them, they are right at the front greeting you. Um, I've introduced them to many children and they could not be happier with kids, which is really quite f funny for older cats because usually you don't see that. Um, they purr up a storm if you're petting them and just want to rub on you for days. Um, they are a little bit active with toys. They really like wand toys. Um, and so that's always fun to play with with them. Um, Mojo is the one that has a mustache and so she kind of has mustache markings on her face. And Sarabi um, does not have the mustache but she has this cute little tiger marking on her toe, um, front foot, which is like adorable. Um, super cute. <laughs> I think these girls could probably um, fit into a variety of like households. Um, I don't think they would be huge fans of like an active dog or want to go home with a dog. I really think they probably want to be um, the only pets in the home just because they're, they're senior kitties that have been with each other their whole lives and um, I think would, would have a hard time adjusting to new cat or dog friends, um, but as far as people, um, they could live in an adult home, they could live with cats, they would be great for um, like an older couple. Uh, really they are just all around fantastic pets and probably are, are kind of like shining stars that we have at the shelter right now because they're just so social and friendly with people. Partridge. He was born actually at the shelter. Uh, his mom um, came to the shelter pregnant uh, and he was brought to um, a staff member's home uh, when they were little, little babies and they were born around Christmas time. So they all had Christmas themed names. Uh, Partridge has grown up looking for a home and dreaming of a family. He is super litter box trained uh, and really social and playful, loves to throw his toys around. Um, a lot of people will come into the shelter and, and say that they're looking for a rabbit, but not a white rabbit, uh, which, which kind of throws us off, especially the ones with red eyes. People don't really seem to like very much. People seem to be a little scared of them. They'll say um, that they would be scared to have them in their home, but white rabbits with red eyes are, are some of the sweetest rabbits around. Um, I've heard them compared to golden retrievers, like they're the golden retriever of the rabbit world. Um, Ruby-eyed whites can be really sweet little girl, little babies. Hi! You'll see here Partridge is enjoying some, some grooming. Hi friend! He says, oh I don't like that. So you'll see Partridge is plucking the hay from his hay manger. This is one of the rabbit's favorite things to do because they love Timothy hay and putting it in that manger means that they have to work a little bit to get it. So it's just like giving cat, like dogs a fun feeder where they have to put a little bit of effort, they have to exert their mental energy. Um, it's just like that, but for rabbits. <laughs> Look at him poking his nose out. He is one of our most inquisitive boys. So he really stands out among our many, many rabbits as super interactive. You know, whenever someone comes in and just walks around the lobby, he runs right up to the door of his cage, begging for pets, begging for attention, begging for food. Um, he is gonna make some lucky family incredibly happy one day because I think he's just gonna be a laugh riot. I don't think you can be bored when you have Partridge in the home. So one of the most important things to people who are planning on adopting a rabbit is, is cage space. Uh, you know, people don't necessarily know where in their home they'll put a rabbit. Uh, I think rabbits can fit in almost any room of the home. Uh, what we have, what we do here is we have the rabbits in um, dog exercise pens. 
Uh, they're really nice. They're used normally for puppies when they're you know outside playing just to keep them safe. But we like to use them for rabbits because they're nice and big, uh, and they're, but they're not too, too big, so it's not overwhelming our space. Um, the general rules of having a rabbit, uh, most of the commercially available rabbit cages are far too small for most rabbits. Uh, the basic guideline is that you want a rabbit to be able to hop any direction three or four times, uh, and you want them to be able to stand up without hitting their ears on the roof. Uh, so it's quite a bit of space, but I don't think it's too, too much, especially when you think of how much they're adding to your family. These rabbits are indoor pets, so they want to live inside. A lot of people will have the rabbits right in the family room or the kitchen, somewhere they spend a lot of time. Uh, people who are worried about maybe their carpeting getting ruined with the rabbit. Well, first of all, obviously rabbits can be litter box trained like we've talked about, but then you can also buy um, you can go to Lowe's or any hardware store and you can buy a sheet of plastic or linoleum to put underneath their cage. So that way, if there are any mistakes, it's super easy to clean up. Um, rabbits do spend, most rabbits spend most of their time in their cage because rabbits like to chew on things. <laughs> and sometimes in their cage is the safest place for them to be. Uh, but rabbits also enjoy at least an hour of time outside the cage every day, spending time with their family. Uh, I like to think of it as great to do when you're sitting down watching TV at night. Uh, so you can have your rabbit hopping around watching your favorite shows with you. Um, and they're also, I think they would be great homework helpers. I will say uh, rabbits, whenever I've sat in with them and started reading, they always like to hop over and see what I'm doing. So they like to try to like nibble on my pages or help me turn them faster. So I think they would be great helps with homework or paperwork. Um, maybe not as helpful as they could be, but they certainly will be fun. Join us on September 9th for the Animal Rescue League of New Hampshire's Dog Friendly 5K and Pet Fair. The whole event takes place at the beautiful Dairyfield Park in Manchester, and it's a great activity for the whole family, even the dog. We have vendors, food trucks, dog demonstrations, and more starting at 9 a.m. and lasting till 1 p.m. You can register for the 5K the day of the event or at www.mydogsarebarking5k.org. And don't forget to bring the dog along. We hope to see you there. Here are some upcoming events for the Animal Rescue League of New Hampshire. for watching for pets sake you can like us on facebook you can also find us on youtube at the animal rescue league of new hampshire's youtube channel